Welcome back to Nothing But A Podcast with me, your host, Giles Thomas. And we are joined for this very special episode, Ronnie Coleman and very special guest, Sean Ray. Yeah, buddy, Sean Ray is in the house. Yeah. One of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. A lot of people don't know this. I I told you this already, but uh, my first Olympia win was Mm -hmm. your routine. 1998. 1998 was Sean Ray's routine from one of his... Uh, or oh, what Olympia uh placings, yeah, back in the day, man. Like second or third, and I copied his routine pose for pose. I gotta tell you, Ronnie, when we saw you backstage, <laughs> I think I nobody knows that <laughs> I forgot my routine in '98 when you got warmed up. <laughs> yes, uh, New York, I, I stole every move you had, just about. Yeah, well, well stole, there were a few poses I couldn't do, so I hit the most muscular. Yeah, because you're too big. You're too big to do all the poses. Big to do some of those uh, poses, so yeah. I have to win the most muscle right there. Well, you get an A for effort, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, buddy. That was my Down. first and only routine that I did, actually. All right. All right. Yeah, because the rest, all, you just all, all, the roof, baby. Yeah, all, yeah, and they were choreographed by somebody else. Yeah, I know you worked with a posing coach, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, guys, I'm guessing the first Olympia, the first time you stepped on stage together was at the 1992 Olympia in Helsinki. But when was the first right. time you actually met? Yeah. Well, uh, Ronnie, just t- you just barely turned pro at, right before that, right, Ronnie? I hadn't yeah, met you before yeah. then. I, I didn't go to the I, I didn't go to the 91 NPC Nationals, which Bob Schick was telling me was the greatest of all time. I missed that yeah. one, 1991. That was you, Lavroni, Paul yeah, DeMeo. Right. Flex Thank Wheeler. Yeah. Was Bob in it? I think Bob was there, right? Bob oh, was there. Cormier. Yeah. Chris Cormier. Was there. Yeah, he uh, was arguing with me that that was the greatest. In, I thought that the 87 was because I actually won that one. But yeah, the 91 was stacked with talent. I missed yep. it. I don't know where I was. <laughs> I was yeah. coming off of that. Uh, I was coming off the Arnold Classic win in 91. And of course, it was the uh, 91 Olympia where uh, Lee Haney retired. And I think they had the Nationals after that. And so I probably was on tour making appearances, which is why I missed that show. So I didn't see Ronnie coming. I mean, when I saw Ronnie, he was standing standing there at the uh, airport in Helsinki, Finland. I think you were with Vicky. And I'm like, what are you doing? I was by myself. I was alone. (laughs) Oh, you were by yourself? Okay, yeah. I'm kind of like, what do you? How did you get here? Like, what what do you do here? I just won the World Championship uh, in in October, and that qualified me for the Olympia. Yeah, so it was a surprise. I'm sh- I showed up, and we backstage warming up, and Sean Ray took off his uh, shirt, and he started doing push-up against the wall, and his chest is crazy separated, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I, I, I'm in the wrong league. I'm in the wrong league. It's amazing how the roles reversed. How, how the roles reversed, man. <laughs> that, was my, that was my rude awakening uh, to the professional league. I think we've all been there before. I remember uh, the same year, I can say, in 91, uh, right before you got there in Orlando, when I saw Haney make the comeback after the yeah, drug I test in 1990. Yeah. Haney, uh, Haney shows up backstage, and in 91, I was just blown away by the progress that Lee Haney made from 1990 to 1991, because I, I was pretty confident coming off the You were shredded. Year. You were you yeah. shredded in 90, and you yeah. should have won. Everybody said you should have won that year, and everybody else was off. You know, they, yeah. They, and then you, though, yeah, I think like, one of the only guys that was shredded. Yeah, and I think my, my back kind of came. My, I lost a little bit of back thickness, which is what was Haney's greatness. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So I got a little, I became a little narrow. I think it cost me. Um, Labrada surprised me. But yeah, when you were backstage in 92, um, I actually didn't know that you were coming there to compete. I was like, what are you doing here? And of course, <laughs> uh, by, by the time you, you actually you actually showed me who you were in 96, um, a lot of people don't realize, but you actually got a top three call out with me and Dorian in 96. It was brief. Yep. Yep. But I saw the pic- I saw the pictures after 96 and I thought, uh oh, you're going to be you're going to be trouble down the road. And of course, 97. <laughs> 
97, uh, I think you, you fell down a placement or two, but 98. No, I fell down, um, yeah, like three plays. I went to ninth. Yeah, but 98. Ninth. 98, you dried out nicely, and that's where everybody said, oh, shit, there's no turning back. Yeah, I started yeah. contemplating <laughs> retirement that year. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, were you at the yeah, were you at the nineteen ninety eight Night of Champions, Sean? In the nineteen ninety? Were you in the nineteen ninety eight Did you see the nineteen ninety eight Night of Champions that Ronnie won? Because that was a precursor to how he looked at Olympia that year. Correct. I didn't see it, but uh I heard all about it. So I knew um Ronnie was on the way. Um I, I had bigger fish to fry. I actually thought that because Dorian was out and because I had beaten Nasser El Sambadi previous years, uh that I, I was cocksure that I was going to be one of the guys to be considered. Of course, I trained with Flex Wheeler, so I knew Flex was arguably going to be one of the guys. But uh, I think I called Ronnie a hundred to one long shot that year. Um, yeah. I just didn't think I, I didn't think he was going to leapfrog over everybody. And I didn't. Either. And all he did was did the homework, huh? You didn't either. I didn't either. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to make the top five. That's, yeah. that was my goal because I'd never made the uh, top five in in, in, in any Olympia. But you so had already, be, you'd already beaten only. Flex. But you had yeah, already be, beaten Flex. Yeah, I, I beat Flex in at uh, Canada, Toronto, in, in 1996, I think. That caught my attention, uh, Ronnie, because I was training with Flex off and on, and I knew Flex was like, to me, Flex was the guy that was going to be the next Mister Olympia. You probably thought yeah. so too. Uh, of course but, I so, did. Yeah, well, so they had when already you beat him. They had already when, paid Flex the guest polls at the uh, women's Mister Olympia, and that paid him. Right. Uh, uh, Mr. Olympia, uh, uh, guest hold money, yeah. yeah so, you big, big money, you assume so they'd already the foregone him the win. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought it was foregone. I'm, I'm quite sure most of the guys did too. Because well, I you know, tell, I, did already got second, what, what twice, I think, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But I don't think – here's the thing about your win, Ronnie, in 98 is that nobody disputed it. I mean, Flex was disappointed and turned around and put his hands on his waist and all that shit, but <laughs> it was it was undisputable, right? Like, oh, that we was, all kind of conceded. No, that, that actually happened in 99. When he turned around? Uh-huh, yeah. But um, in, in 98, uh, didn't, in, he his, didn't he take nope, his medal nope. off? No, 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 he didn't. He, didn't, he, he was uh, – I think he thought it was like, you know, it was, it was like one of those things that, you know – it was it was it was, a, it was a surprise, and it, it was one of those things. That, that maybe they had made a mistake, yeah. and he was going to correct it next year for sure. Yeah, ninety nine. So he he, he 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 wasn't that upset, you know. Okay. In ninety nine, oh, he lost it. Yeah, <laughs> but in ninety nine, the door the door was still closed because you got so it looked like you got so much bigger in ninety nine. Um, I did. How much? I put on how, I put on ten pounds. Yeah. So yeah, I went from I mean, two. It, 45 to 255. I think that's when I started contemplating retirement, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. But I had gotten, yeah. in 98, I was a little distracted. I had gotten engaged uh, the night of the Olympia after you'd won. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I think you guys were up that. there doing, you were still out there. I think they were still trying to get you off the floor when I was actually getting oh. engaged backstage. Um <laughs> Yeah, I, I, was, presented, uh, I, was, uh, I was out for, for a little while there. <laughs> yeah, I had presented my uh, my then um, girlfriend with a ring backstage at the Olympia, and it was short-lived because uh, I thought I was done with bodybuilding after you won that show. And by January, I realized I wasn't done with bodybuilding, and it was still my first love. And I took the yep. ring back, and I broke up with the girl. <laughs> and I, started, <laughs> I, went, I went right back to bodybuilding again. I just thought, like... It's over, but then, you know, after a little bit of calories and looking at the pictures and feeling like, okay, I could see where I got beat by the bigger guys, I wasn't ready to walk away. Yeah. I, I hung around I've for done a few that, more I've, years. I've done that, too. I've done that same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Charles, what do you want to talk about, man? I'm just listening. I'm loving hearing all these stories, guys. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh. This is very cool. Oh, yeah. We got some stories now. <laughs> well, I, I, got, I got a first-class seat to watch what Ronnie did. And I, I tell you, when I do my seminars around the world and people come up to me and they say, do you think I can do this? Do you think I can do that? Ronnie doesn't know this, but literally every seminar, his name comes up from the standpoint of <laughs> when you think you can't do something, just look at Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie yeah, Coleman exactly. was a pizza delivery boy. Ronnie Coleman yep. was, a, was a, a, a football player. Ronnie Coleman was a, a cop. Yep. He had all these other things going on in his life. And he went from last place the first place, when you talk about a study of consistency and endurance, yep. 
where most guys would quit. Flex Wheeler was ready to quit um, when he wasn't when he didn't win the Nationals. I think one year he was ready yeah, to quit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I use Ronnie as a study of consistency because it was something that he didn't. He never set out to be Mr. Olympia. Didn't think he nope. was going to be Mr. Olympia. Nope. Um, sure didn't. He just he just kept grinding away, was, grinding away t- until he won. Yeah. But all that thing that saved me at is that I had a passion for it. Right. I loved doing what I was doing. So mm-hmm. I would have done it for free, you know, basically. We I found that out in 2001, Ronnie. I had a job <laughs> working full Ronnie, time. Ronnie, we, we knew in 2001 at the press conference that you would have done it for free. Because that was where I got all fired up. Remember that, Giles? I was there. Uh, I, was, I, was try- I was trying to say that everybody should be getting paid money, right? I think Ronnie yeah. thought maybe I was trying to minimize what he did. But what I was trying to say, yeah. Ronnie, you're going you're gonna to get your money. I got my money. What the Federation as a whole needs to do is give everybody else some money. That's kind of yeah. what I was trying to say, but I, 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 it wasn't coming just across. Got together on our own and yeah. presented that to, to them. We yeah. just wasn't together. If we, if it was happening in together, real time. Yeah, yeah, it happened in real time. If we, if we would have planned that together and, yeah, yeah. and, and get behind closed doors and then came with them at, with that, I think I think we would have made more progress than, than we made. Yeah, I think that I think I was triggered by the judge, uh, the late Deshea Santa, Deshea yeah, Deshea. She, she passed away. I, I think I was triggered because she was opening these doors that I would just I was kind of like this. Right. I wasn't ready for it. And then once yeah. she started opening those once she started opening those doors, I kind of like took the gloves off. I'm like, screw it. I'm quitting anyways. I'm done. I've, I've had as much bullshit. as I can think. <laughs> And then Ronnie got sucked into it because I started. I thought about, I was attacking, I was attacking yeah. me because I was winning. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, like, I, didn't, I didn't know what y'all was trying to, you know, get more money for us all. So yeah. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's going on here? Well, because uh, you had gotten nothing for many years, right? I mean, yeah, was, yeah. You, you were used to it. It was like part of the game. Yep, exactly. Uh, <laughs> that was a lot of shows. I thought I should have played a whole lot better than I so did. But I didn't complain. <laughs> yeah. So here's an ana- here's an analogy. Right now in today's news, the women's pro soccer players have been fighting for equal pay. Yep. And they weren't getting that. it. They weren't getting it. the women's pro soccer team was winning U.S. gold medals for se- yep. consecutive years where the men were not. But the men were getting their lion's share. And the women yep. bitched, moaned and complained long enough that they just reached a twenty four million dollar settlement and, for these and ladies. Now got, and now they got equal play also. And that's what I'm saying. So what what's hap- what happened for them is what I was trying to trying do for to the do men. For body building, yeah. not, but I couldn't I do think, it as an individual. Yeah, exactly. I think if we'd have got together behind closed doors and then presented it yeah. that way, in a world we were all together, we all knew what was going on. I think we I think we'd have got something Yeah. Out I, I think I think divided divided we couldn't really accomplish yeah. much. And that's kinda that's kinda what they wanted. Keep that's, us all that's separate. what that's what happened. That's what happened. Mm-hmm. We all divided. Yeah, that was that. That was it for me. The 01, 01 press conference kind of set the tone for the next chapter of my life. And it was not because I wasn't getting my lion's share. It was just because I saw there was such a disparity from winning to losing uh, yeah. and using all the, using everyone's name and, and country representation to promote the show. And, and the athletes weren't getting the, the lion, getting, you know, compensated. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. What, 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 that was your last year competing in 2001? Yeah. That, that was, that's, that's kind of what took the band aid off. Like I could have probably gone for a couple of more years. Yeah. But I think for me, the passion, because there just wasn't enough progress being made on the on the athlete side. I just didn't see any avenues where we could make more money or revenue yeah. share or something. Nothing was happening. And I'd been doing yeah. it for 13 years. Yeah, and you had been at the, and you had been at the top for all those 13 years too. Yeah, and I you know I got to a place Ronnie where I was like, how do how do I turn the corner? How do I get it? Every year seemed like Groundhog Day. It was the same yeah. thing. Pre- preparing yeah. for the Olympia, making. And I kind of got bored. Um, yeah, you kind of lose also, your passion. Yeah, and I also and you realized, gotta have that for this. Yeah, and here comes yeah. Jay Cutler, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So trying to make that next chapter was everything. Kind of got fast tracked when Deshay at the press conference opened that can of worms. And yeah. at least I, I never meant to put you on the spot. I don't think we ever had a chance to talk about that press conference. No, I, where I, you? I, you be honest, I forgot all about it, Sean. <laughs> no, but I, I'm reminded. <laughs> I'm reminded because it looked like Kevin went on the offensive towards you, and I was on the offensive towards yeah, you. But, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking I everybody think, else is against me. Yeah, and I you were the champ. 
Yeah. Well, you have the biggest target, and I think we were we were targeting you, trying to get you off your game. I mean, but at the same time, yeah. um, some of the misinterpretation of the takeaway was that we were trying to take something from you, when in fact we were just trying to get the federation to give more on the bottom. If we can beef up the bottom pay, yeah. it, it secures what we got going on up here, but everybody gets something. I mean, to call yourself a Mr. Olympia competitor and to be advertised – as yep. an athlete that people are paying money to come and see and then yep. to go home with nothing because you place 11th because yep. you place yep. 12th. I would yep. rather see them have 10 athletes and all 10 athletes get a, a lot of, a lot of money than to have only 10 athletes out of 25 athletes get paid. It's just, yeah. like, like it wasn't something all, I was on board with. All the athletes get paid. Yeah. Even at all-star but, games. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you know, like I said, we just wasn't together on it and yeah. Didn't get anything uh, resolved. Well, we, it. What was I, what I was told was, you know, have your own show and you can do your own thing. So I created my show. You created your show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Gaspari has a show coming up in Maui. Linda Murray has a couple of shows. Yeah. Keith yeah. has his classic. So I think it was a good thing. Jay Cutler's got three or four shows. I mean, I think it was a yeah. good thing because it made us more responsible for how we feel. How can we give back? And by creating my own show, I'm able to kind of do and construct what I want. For the athletes and pay it forward. Yeah, yeah, me too. I've had everybody come to my show. I, I, mm-hmm. I'm, at, I'm going on my 25th year. This I year. know I emceed your show a couple of times. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so you know how we back. do things. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. how we do things. It's always a great show and it's always a good time. So yeah, I saw now on the women's side, Janet Leung. She just promoted a show. Sid Gillen has a show coming up in May. Uh, yeah. I, I believe. Uh, Andrea Shaw is working with John Simmons on shows. So it's great to see the athletes actually yeah. having shows yeah. and having a say in this. Yeah, a lot of athletes are having shows now. A lot of them. Mm-hmm. Sean, when did, you, when did you feel that Ronnie, or get a, get a feel that Ronnie was actually going to become as dominant as he was? Well, I told you I saw him coming in 96. I just didn't tell him. Um, when he beat Flex, I, <laughs> yeah. when he beat Flex, I sat up and took notice because, you know, Flex, Flex was my boy. Like, I thought Flex, Flex was going to be Mr. Olympia, or I was, right? So... Uh, sure. I liked Ke- I liked Kevin's body, but I could pick him apart a little bit easier than I could pick out Flex. And I also trained with Flex once in a while. So uh, when Ronnie beat Flex, I came back home. I was like, holy crap, how did that happen? And then I was training with Flex in 98. Um, and he won the Arnold Classic. And then I stopped training with Flex. <laughs> and, of course, yeah. Flex Flex went on. He got, he got second place up against Ronnie, which was predictable. Um and I, again, a couple of times I looked at Kevin. I thought, how did Kevin beat me? Because Kevin, I thought, was kind of slight in the in the rear hamstring. From the side, his hamstrings look good. But from the back, and I thought his back was a little bit uh, shallow in certain areas. I thought there was an area I could beat Kevin in that I could not beat Flex in. So the 99 Olympia, when Kevin beat me, I was, I was disappointed. 98 Olympia, Kevin beat me. I was disappointed. Um, but if it wasn't going to be Flex Wheeler as Mr. Olympia, I was of the opinion that it might potentially be me without Dorian Yates. But when Ronnie beat Flex... And then he got called out with me and Dorian in 96. Um, I, I thought he's he all he has to do is dry up. And it took him two years to do it. And he never looked back. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's what I was liking. Then. <laughs>